Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It is Tuesday, November 6th. Wow. Yeah, sure, you know. Why not? Why not be Tuesday, right? No, it's Sunday. Yes, thank you very much. Woo! How about it's Sunday, November 6th? How's that sound? Yes, Sunday, November 6th. This is why I need to be done and rest and heal and and all of that, right? Yeah, it's Sunday, November 6th. Today is All Saints Sunday. Yes. So uh, welcome uh, today. Uh, We're going to start off. Tom has an announcement for us. Good morning. Well, it's that time of year again for our annual congregational meeting, and it will be held on Sunday, the Sunday after next, which is November the 20th. It will be held immediately after the worship service in here and on Zoom. Now, but you're encouraged to attend in person. It just works a lot better, but we'll have both. You have already received a copy of the proposed changes to the Constitution and bylaws, and in this coming week we will email out and mail additional information for the meeting. So your attendance and participation are very important because we need to have a quorum here uh, to do business. I encourage all of you to continue to support the church council as it works to plan for a difficult year. I encourage all of you to talk to me and other members of the council about what your thoughts and ideas are about the future of St. Stephen. Uh, We will do our best to listen and respond thoughtfully. We must all work to build consensus so that we can act as one body to carry out the mission of this place. I especially at this point want to thank Pastor Matthew for his five plus years here. You've provided a lot of services to us. It's been a challenging time in many ways. (laughs) There have been a lot of changes in your time here, probably more than I've seen from anyone. Uh, Of course, COVID stuck its ugly head right in the middle of all this and and completely disrupted our normal flow of things. But, you know, in addition to dealing with those challenges, uh, there's been a lot of things that have done that have been very helpful. Our health ministries have grown a lot, and I really hope we can continue them as best we can. Uh, Also, the online worship, which we're doing right now, is new, and it maybe was brought about by COVID, but I think it was coming anyway. And uh, things you did, like stroll through the scriptures every Monday, was appreciated by many, and and many other things that you've done, and we appreciate your service to this church. So we will do our best to keep up with what we can. And so we'd appreciate your thoughts and prayers to us uh, as we go forward. And at this point, I would like to ask the choir to say something about Abby. I think somebody's, Bill's gonna be the spokesman. We'd like to thank Abby for all she has time and love she has given to the choir. If you look around, uh, it's been a very difficult journey. (laughs) Thank you very much. We're going to miss you. Thanks to you and Pastor for leading us during this period. Thank you. We love you. So, uh, so we got uh, thanks and best wishes to, to you as you go forward and to whatever you plan to do. Uh, and just to kind of celebrate your ministry here, I want to remind everybody immediately after this, there's a reception in the fellowship hall. And we'll honor you and Abby and the rest of your family for your service to St. Stephen. And uh, like I say, wish you the best as you go forward in your ministry. Thank you.
Thank you, Tom. I really appreciate that. And thank you, choir, for the kind words for Abby. Um, I, I know it's, it's uh, Abby's always the quiet one um, uh, behind the bench. And I don't know if you are, even all know what she looks like on the front, because <laughs> this is what you always see. <laughs> no, they're greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for the kind words, and um, thank you for being a part of the ministry. I mean, that's that's what makes it all possible, is that you've all been a part of the ministry. It's not it's not what I have been doing. It's not what Abby has been doing on the bench. It's what we all have been doing together. That's what makes ministry possible. And so I just want to thank you again for getting on board and doing crazy stuff with me. Just trying crazy things. That's what it's all about. That's what 12 fishermen and other assorted crazy people along with some women and other people did with Jesus did crazy stuff with him and so I just thank you for doing that with me thank you very much as we continue with our announcements for today today is All Saints Sunday not Tuesday as I mentioned and so we're going to have an opportunity to remember our loved ones. And so if you're in the sanctuary, you'll notice in the bulletin, you'll have an opportunity to do that here in person. If you're online, you have an opportunity to do that at uh, wherever you are. So I invite you, this is your opportunity to get a candle. Um, if you don't have a candle, uh, you have uh, a phone, you can, you can be creative. You have a you have a little uh, uh, a flashlight. Thank you uh, on your phone. Some kind of light. You'll have an opportunity to light a candle or a light in honor of a loved one, and I encourage you to do that. We want to welcome our visitors and our guests today. We thank you for being here today. Hopefully, everyone has a bulletin. Uh, who is in, in person, and if you're online, you can find the bulletin at stephenlc.org. Um, communion will be done uh, three ways. If you're in person, you can receive at your seat. Uh, there are communion packets both at entrances, uh, so you can receive at your seat, or we will do communion by coming forward and doing intinction, which means that you will receive bread, and then we will have both uh, a cup of wine or grape juice, and you will dip the bread into one or the other. Um, you'll also have uh, gluten-free wafers as well, if that is something that you need. Um, and for those of you online, you're welcome to participate by providing your own elements of uh, bread and either wine or grape juice, just enough uh, for the communion. You're welcome to participate in that way. We want to thank our many worship assistants who help make worship possible. Worship, uh, you know, we, we have this fancy word in the church, it's called the liturgy. And liturgy isn't just what the bulletin is, liturgy is the work of the people. And it's the work of the people that make worship possible. And so there's lots of folks who help make worship possible. And so I want to thank, this is my opportunity to thank not just the people who are helping today, but uh, who have, uh, there's lots of folks who have helped over five and a half years. I'm not going to name everybody because I don't know, we don't have enough time to do that. Uh, but if you have helped over the last five and a half years in making worship possible, I sincerely thank you because worship doesn't happen just because the pastor did, does something. It happens because of everybody doing something to make worship happen. And so today, especially, I want to thank Tom and Cheryl as our AV team. Jen is our Zoom host. Roger is our lector. Maxine is our assisting minister. Beth is our cantor. Abby is our organist. Larry is our usher. Maxine and Carol provided altar guild, and Carol is our communion assistant. And I especially thank our choir for singing this morning. So thank you one and all for helping out. 
a couple of last announcements. We're going to replace the canticle of praise that is in the bulletin because, you know, it wouldn't be a final worship service if we didn't just change something. <laughs> so this was by special request that we're going to change the canticle of coal of praise to this little light of mine. So uh, if you're in the sanctuary, you can find that in the, the, um, the hymnal. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling it together. The hymnal, which is number 677. We're going to sing three verses of this. Is that right? Yeah. This little light of mine. We'll announce that when we get to it. Um, so that's going to be in place of the canticle of praise. Um, so like, like I said, we'll, we will get there. Lastly, um, you are welcome for those of you online to put prayers in the chat section. Those will be sent to me. We'll add those in at the appropriate time. Otherwise, I encourage you at this time to turn to page one of the bulletin where we will read our mission statement together. We respond to Christ's love by feeding those who hunger in body, mind, and spirit. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we hear our prelude. Please rise as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who redeems us in Christ Jesus, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have ignored voices that call for your justice. 
We have neglected actions that witness for your righteousness. We have spoken and acted in ways that disrupt your beloved community. We have truly repented of things that were done and left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits so that we may live in newness, follow the way of the Spirit, and build up the body of Christ. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. God hears the prayers of all who cry out and restores to us to live to life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us sing together for all the saints. The boundless grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God, and the light of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
again, the canticle of praise will be this little light of mine. Uh, it can be found in the hymnal. It's verse number 677. Beautiful. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know your inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear from our choir. Oh, so 
first lesson is a reading from the prophet Daniel, the seventh chapter. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions passed through his mind as he lay in bed. Then he wrote them down. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea. And four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions that passed through my mind terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these great beasts, four kings shall rise out of the earth, but the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever, and ever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. sing praise with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in the people and adorns the poor in victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them sing for joy on their beds. second lesson is a reading from St. Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, the first chapter. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance, the words redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Word of God, word of life. And speak to God.
reading from the gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what the ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And for anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So I just want to take this in for a moment. So here we are. What does one say in their last sermon in a call? I have no idea. (laughs) I have no idea. I have some notes. And even the notes are kind of weird. I got some, st- like, this, I got, I got a one-page thing, and most of this I'm not even going to touch, because, like, I just prepared some stuff. Remember last week, preaching on Reformation, and in the middle of the sermon, I said, I have no idea where the sermon's going to go. I have no idea where the sermon's going to go. Okay. So I got some stuff. We'll see where it goes. I'm interested to see where the sermon goes. And you all are like, this is crazy. I just trust the Spirit to just go where the Spirit... The Spirit has things that need to be said, and so the Spirit will say what needs to be said. That's what I trust. Okay? How's that sound? Great. Good. (laughs) If I had to sum it all up, I could really do this really simple in three words. Just follow Jesus. And I could just go and sit down. It would be a little disappointing, though, for you all. Problem is in the details of that, right? I don't know that we all agree with what that means across the world, right? What, what does it mean to just follow Jesus? I mean, that's all nice and easy to say, but what, what does it mean? There's a, there's a, a, a question that, that I tried to have as a guide for myself that I've tried to have at least over the last five years, if not longer, which is if I claim to be a follower of Jesus, if I claim to be a follower of Jesus, then in this situation, whatever situation I find myself in, how am I treating this other person that I'm coming across? Or put another way, maybe a little more crudely, I can't follow Jesus and treat someone like crap. I mean, that's just what it comes down to for me. That's, that's my question that I have to struggle with 
that keeps me in line, that, that guides me, that makes me uncomfortable enough to keep going. The challenge is there's the idea and the application. There's the idea of Christianity and following Jesus and the application of how we do it. I was struck by our, where is it here? Our prayer of the day. I didn't even notice this. Our prayer of the day. I'm going to read it back to you. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Great. Okay. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment. To know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. That's not just the idea. That's the application of faith. Oh, how easy it is for us to think that we grasp the idea of the gospel. Oh, how easy it is for us to grasp the idea, think what we have grasped the idea of the gospel. To hear the words and think, yep, we got it. And to reject what the world, to think that we have rejected what the world has, is offering. Yet how easy it is that we apply what the world presents and to push away what Jesus calls on us to do. We make all sorts of excuses. We make all sorts of excuses for why we can't follow Jesus. The timing's not right. Well, that's just, that doesn't work. Think about what, what Jesus calls on us to do. The way of peace. Well, you know, that's just not practical. Well, sell all your possessions. Well, we can't do that. Well, love your enemies. Well, I have yet to hear anyone make an excuse why we can't follow the way of the world. Anybody heard any excuses why we can't follow the way of the world? <laughs> Jesus did. Yeah. Jadim, you're a smart man. <laughs> you're a smart man. So, Let's talk about this. Idea and application. What does the world present? What are the ideas that the world presents? Gratification. Instant gratification. Here's a couple other ones. The strong survive. Might makes right. The ends justify the means. And one that's been around for a really long time, the cruelty is the point. Anybody doubt those things? Those have been around for a really long time. Humanity has been living under those things for a really long time. Scripture talks about those things. Just go to the stories of scripture, right? Every, every Palm Sunday, we participate in these. In the story of the passion, what do we yell as the crowd? Crucify him, crucify him. What's the purpose of crucifixion? What's the purpose of crucifixion? The cruelty is the point. The punishment, the cruelty is the point. Right? When Paul and Silas disrupt the economic flow and are thrown in jail in the center of a prison, it's the cruelty is the point. 
When Rome does what it's doing, the cruelty is the point. Nebuchadnezzar, when he does what he's doing, the cruelty is the point. Pharaoh, when he says, make more bricks and do it without straw, the cruelty is the point. If you go to the concentration camps in Europe, the cruelty is the point. Slavery, the cruelty was the point. We don't have to go to different places. We've done it in our own culture because humanity has lived by that. And that's true here because we're a bunch of humans too. We've done this in our own culture because we're humans and we will continue to do it. It's not a stretch for me to say that on Tuesday, somewhere in this country, we will elect people who will enact policies where the cruelty will be the point. I don't know where, I don't know what those policies will be. Why can I say that? Because all you have to do is study history. The cruelty is the point. Today is All Saints Sunday. Today is All Saints Sunday. Being a saint is about following, not about doing. It's about following. It's about following God. It's about following Jesus, who presents a different path. Jadam said it. Jadam's a smart guy. Listen to Jadam. Being a saint is about following. There's lots of different types of saints. There's saints who follow the way of the world, who follow this path of the ends justify the means, the strong survive, might makes right, and the cruelty is the point. You'll see them on the cover of magazines. You'll see them on the internet. You'll see them in all sorts of different things. The world loves to highlight them. But today in the church, we celebrate the saints who follow a different path. We read about the path that Jesus lays out. It's in, it's in the, the, the Sermon on the Plain. It's Luke's version of the Beatitudes it's a different path. Blessed are you who are poor. And it goes on. This is Jesus inviting us to a different way. It's not about, oh, you know, just like terrible type of things. It's inviting us to a different way. Woe to you who are rich is not about, oh, it's terrible that you're rich. It's inviting you to a different way. There's this contrast between rich and poor, hungry and full, weeping and laughing. Blessed are you when people hate you. Woe to you when all speak well of you. Because it goes back to that initial question, how can I follow Jesus and treat someone like crap? See, Jesus has been preaching a message. And what does it come down to? Good news for the poor. Good news for the poor. It's good news. It's good news. And he preaches a message that is far different than what the world has. The world has been offering this other message for a really long time. And we see what the results have been. We see what the results have been. We've been trying it for millennia. How's that working? How's it working that the cruelty is the point? When you try something over and over again and you get the same results, what's the, de the definition of? So why do we keep doing this? And yet, we make excuses for why we don't try Jesus' way as a world. It's crazy. It's crazy. The gospel is a perfect example of idea versus application. 
Following Jesus is not easy. It's not easy. But I'm going to tell you this right now. Continuing to follow the way of the world is a heck of a lot harder. Because you have to have even... You, the way of the world is filled with fear and hatred. And that's exhausting. It's exhausting. I can't bear that. Isn't that what Martin Luther King said or something? Right? He said, I, I don't remember exactly what he said. Again, I, I don't know where the sermon's going. <laughs> I didn't prepare that. Right? <laughs> Somebody can Google that. Somebody can, can Google what he, what he said. Right? The way of the world is full of messages that are full of hatred and anger that have no vision, that are full of woe. What is it that Jesus offers? Vision, joy, Peace, blessing, love, and it's not easy because oftentimes we feel like we're alone. We oftentimes feel like we're alone. I guarantee you the saints oftentimes felt like they were alone. And yet here we are. I don't, I see more than one person. I see more than one person. And I know there's more than one person online. We're not alone. Oftentimes, we're waiting for someone else to do it. We're waiting for someone else to start because we're afraid. We're afraid of the consequences. We're afraid of, so, are we going to be, uh, we're, we're afraid that we're going to be seen as, as the crazy one. We're afraid of, uh, you know, being seen as, I don't know what, right? There's this video that, that I shared, and it's, um, uh, it's a three-minute video. It's a TED Talk, of all things. And it's this guy. You remember this, Lee, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's this guy out in a field, and it's a concert. <laughs> and it's a concert, and this guy just gets up, and he's at, dancing like a fool, right? Dancing like a fool. And he's by himself. And it's about leadership. And he's dancing like a fool, out by himself, and, and the guy who's given the speech is like, so is this guy a leader? And everyone's like, yeah. And the guy who's given the speech is like, no. He's just a fool by himself. Why? Because it takes someone else to follow. Right? It's not until the second person comes up and stands with him and starts dancing with him That he becomes a leader, and that it becomes safe to do it. It becomes safe to do it. So here's my thing. If you're waiting for someone else to follow the way of Jesus, here I am, dancing like a crazy person. Is anyone going to join me? Thank you, Jadam. Thank you, Jadam. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's all it takes. My friends, it's All Saints Sunday. It's All Saints Sunday. Jesus is out there dancing like a crazy person. He's been doing it for centuries. The way of Jesus is not through force, it's by invitation. And he's been inviting us our whole lives to get up and dance with him like a bunch of crazy people. The world thinks we're crazy. And yet I look at the way of the world that says the cruelty is the point, and I'm like, that's insane. Why would I want the cruelty to be the point? I can't live in a world where the cruelty is the point. I can't live in a world where the ends justify the means. I can't live in a world where the strong survive. I can't live in a world where might makes right. 
I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I refuse. And I may be the only one. I don't care. I'm just at that point. And so, call me crazy. I don't care. I'm going to follow Jesus. Will I fail? Sure. I'm going to fail here and there and whatever. But Jesus is going to pick me up and I'm going to keep going. Will I make excuses? I'm human and I will struggle. And I'm sure I will continue to probably go with the way of the world from here and there, but I will not do it alone. And I will keep coming back. And I will keep coming back because the way of the world is insanity. It's insanity. And, and when I come to my senses, I will see that it's insanity. And I can't keep going back to that. On this All Saints Sunday, we have older brothers and sisters, siblings who have gone this path before us, who have trod this path, who have stood out and stood with Jesus dancing and looking like a fool. And it's been costly. And I'm happy to stand with them and dance like a fool with them. Me and Jadam, we're going to dance like fools with them. And whoever else wants to dance like fools with them, invite you all to do that with us. Following Jesus isn't easy. It's really hard, which is why we have the good news. Because it's not about us doing it. It's about us following what Jesus has done. Jesus has done it already for us. And all we're doing, thanks be to God, is that Jesus, thankfully, doesn't treat us the same way that the world does. You know what the cruelty of the point is really all about? The cruelty being the point is about superiority. I'm better and you're inferior and you need to suffer. That's what the cruelty being the point is about. And thanks be to God that God doesn't treat us like that. If we follow Jesus, we don't treat people like crap. We follow what God has already done for us, which is that we see the image of God in others. We treat others the way that God has treated us, with grace and mercy and love. And we go and we dance like crazy fools, and we reject the way of the world. And we go and we find other people who will dance with us, because the saints are numerous. We thank God for that. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to sing our hymn of the day, which uh, was also a special request from me, which is my favorite hymn, which is, O oh God, our help in ages past.
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Holy One, your church rests on the faithful who came before us. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders the will to carry the church forward and discern your will for the future. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, the earth is yours and all that dwell in it. Care for the places ravaged by national, natural disasters, quell raging fires, and halt destruction caused by flooding. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, you raise up leaders to guide your people. Kindle in them the passion to care for others. I desire to seek the common good and to encourage to love their enemies. Lord, in your mercy, in your prayer. Holy One, you bless those who are poor, hungry, and reviled. Provide food, housing, and security to all who are vulnerable or are in crisis. May those who have more than enough give generously. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, hold us in community with one another. Nurture a spirit of abundant hospitality and intentional inclusion among us. Welcoming the gifts of adults and children, inspire creative visions for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear receive our prayer. Holy One, we remember in thanksgiving all those who have died. Wipe away our tears. Comfort us with the promise of everlasting life in you. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. At this time, I invite any additional prayers from within the sanctuary. Receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to continue with a remembering of those who have passed away. We're going to begin with a reading of uh, the names of those who are members of the congregation as well as friends of the congregation. After that, you'll be welcome to, uh, if you're in the sanctuary, you'll be welcome to come forward to light a candle. There are candles on each side. I welcome you to uh, take a candle from the basket and you can light it from an existing candle. Please take from the, from the, the uh, candle in the basket and then tip on the side. Don't, uh, light, don't remove the candle from within the bowl. Um, and you can, you can come forward to either side uh, after we do that. Um, but for right now, what we will do is read uh, the names of those uh, loved ones, uh, members and friends of the congregation who have passed away in, in this past year. In memory of those who died, Novella Lengel. Joseph Taylor. Ron Bowermaster. June Roberto. 
Betty Troy. Hubert Corby. Edward Boynowski. Patricia Lingle. You may come forward as you please. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace now. And for those of you who are online, we welcome you to turn your camera on and we will share the peace with you. Instructions for the um, offering are in the bulletin. We thank you for your generosity. Additionally, this is the opportunity for those of you who are receiving at your seat to begin to open up your communion packets, to make it a little bit easier for yourself. Um, in addition, those of you who are online to set your table of bread and either wine or grape juice, you need just enough to um, uh, for communion anything that's left over the proper way to dispose of any additional um, uh, anything that's left over from communion is either to consume it right after uh, worship is done or to return it to the ground because that's where it began from please don't put it down the sink or anything of that nature just take it outside and return it to the ground let us continue with the offering prayer. Let us pray. 
Blessed are you, maker of all things, as you have entrusted us with all that you have created. Now gather our gifts, nourish us with this sacrament, and send us to those who hunger and thirst for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you, also with you. Lift up your hearts, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. I welcome those who are receiving at their seat or online to hold their element of bread. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, I invite you to hold up your cup. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of, our, of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ spreads a table before you. Gather here with all the saints. the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you.
Please rise as you're able. Let us pray. We give you thanks, most gracious God, that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us with your body in the world and to serve those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The God of peace who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together our sending hymn, ye watchers and ye holy ones. peace with Christ beside you. Thank you. Thanks be to God.